Is my money safe in the bank, or should I withdraw it, until it's too late? And what's up with all these money printing related news? These are questions that more and more people are asking at the moment. Very good questions, indeed. I will try to give you the best possible answers in this video, so lay back and make sure to stick with me till the end of this video. Before we get into it, give it a thumbs up, so YouTube shows it to other people as well and don't forget to subscribe, so you'll be the first notified when a new video is released. So how safe is your money and why are central banks around the world, but especially in the US willing to print a lot of money and pumping it into our economy? 13. Lucky or unlucky number, that's how many banks shut down since the beginning of 2017 in the US. This year it was only one till now. During the 2008 financial crisis there were 25 banks, which failed, but one year later, in 2009 there were 140 banks, which ran out of business. I made this comparison, because more and more people are comparing this health crisis to the one that took place in 2008 or even in 1929. The truth is, the health crisis has turned into a financial crisis as well, we've seen that on the markets, where panic has been the boss since last month. Some studies also suggest that unemployment rate could hit as high as 30% and conference board's analysis shows that 23 million US jobs are in immediate danger due to the economic disruption caused by this health crisis. I will turn to our money in the bank in a minute, but it's important to point out some things, that are all related to each other. The big picture is made of three little ones, but all very important. It's like this three-piece puzzle. Let's put it together. First of all, you have all these companies shutting down and laying off people. The reasons for this are somewhat understandable, since people are not traveling, are not staying in hotels, not going to restaurant, all in all, not spending money. Due to lockdowns and quarantines money is not spent as usual, which puts companies in a hard situation, not to mention that they are also asked to shut their doors, to contain the new illness. But loans and employees have to be paid. Since there is no money, many companies have to lay off people which will also end in people not having money. If companies have problems paying loans, people will have problems paying off debt, mortgages, different car payments and so on. Now banks suffer and without money, at some point they might fail. What if you had your savings in a failed bank? Don't worry, in most cases you are covered. I will explain this in a bit, but before that, let's jump to the second piece of our puzzle. In order to stop the banks from failing and to safeguard the bank's system, central banks can step in, like a muscular father who's defending his son. In the US the father of banks is the Federal Reserve. The Fed has announced, that the money printing presses are fired up, so the Fed has the ability to print infinite money and just throw that into the economy. That gives banks a fresh breath of air, so they don't fail and the economy stay safe. Moreover, the government is willing to use debt to pay off debt. But this is for another video, so let's turn back to printing infinite money. This is called liquidity. It's kind of like batteries to the remote control. Without it, you cannot control your TV. It's the same with liquidity, injecting money into the economy allows people to exchange money and banks to make loans and then people to borrow again and so on. This is done in hope of decreasing fear on the markets, because when people panic, they tend to pull their money out of the economy and that could ruin the whole economic system. That is also why the Fed cut interest rates to zero, so we can borrow money easily and it makes car loans, home loans and student loans much easier to pay. The problem is, that with all these measures, especially with pumping a lot of money into the economy, comes inflation. That happens naturally. As I covered in a previous video, if you have many cars on sale, you will have to lower the price of yours, if you want to sell it quickly. It's exactly the same with money. If you have too much paper money, the value of it goes down, that is prices go up, without you earning more. And don't forget, that printing money comes with the cost of printing plus interest and in the end it's the taxpayers who will feel the burden of this decision. And that brings us to the third and the final piece of our picture, or puzzle, our money if any, in the bank. What if all faith in the financial markets disappears and your bank fails? Will you lose your money? So the Fed jumped in, so his sons, the banks don't fail, but in the worst case scenario, you should not keep more money than the maximum allowed insured limit, which will vary country to country. In the European Union this limit is set to 100,000 euros. In the US the FDIC insurance limit which protects your money is up to $250,000. It used to be $100,000, but after 2008 it was increased up to $250,000. There were some debates about the fact, 
that FDIC can take up to several years to give you your money back, some people were even talking about 99 years. Now, that is absolutely not true, because if your bank runs out of business, the FDIC will come in and will usually give your money back the next business day. Most of the times the money stays put, and the failed bank gets renamed, so you won't even notice, yet your money stays safe. If you have more than $250,000 in one bank, then in order for you to be able to stay calm about your finance, you should break up the total sum and deposit it to different banks in such a way that the deposited amount does not exceed the maximum allowed insured limit, that is $250,000. Thank you for watching, see you soon and don't forget to subscribe.